Hello and welcome to another video on the COVID-19 pandemic that we are seeing and that's really spreading very, very quickly across the world at the moment. I'm Dr. Skalp Berger from Dr. Luke on Call and um, today I want to discuss a bit of a difficult topic, um, twofold. It's difficult because you know, you've got to understand a little bit about the lung and the, the inside, the working mechanisms of the lung, but also because it's the reason why people pass away and why people die from COVID-19. The mortality rate across the world varies quite a bit and the average is around 2%, but in countries like Italy, we've seen up to 10% mortality rate. A couple of factors are really important there. The one thing that got a very old population, I think they're the second or third oldest population in the world. And another big um, factor that plays a, a huge role in this is almost 23% of their population smokes. And um, you'll see now, if you've got a smoking history or a, any sort of a lung disease history, um, then this virus is gonna cause a lot of problems um, in your body and specifically in your lungs. So the question still then remains, why do we see fatalities? We've gotta look at the, the anatomy of the lung a little bit just to give you some uh, information, just like a baseline to work from. You have, the trachea, which is the main air pipe that comes down your neck. You can feel the vocal cords there and just right below the trachea that goes down into the chest. You have the trachea splitting up in two bronchi, these big air pipes that go to the right and to the left lung. They're slightly different, slightly angled there because you obviously got the heart and that's also in the chest. These big you know, pipes needs to divide and get smaller and smaller and smaller. When they're still big, they've got cartilage rings around them. That's why it's hard, you can feel that. And the cartilage is there to keep it open. When it gets to the sort of middle and end parts of the lung, and the lung is quite big, it's all the way up to your collarbone, um, you start seeing these little bubbles developing right at the end of it. So you have all these bubbles that looks like that. They almost look like grapes, tiny little ones that are right at the end and they are tiny little bubbles. They are called alveoli. And if we look at one alveolus, so if we now zoom in quite a lot from that little spot there, we take only one of them and we look at it really magnified. And you might wanna ask me, but what sort of number do we have of this? 480 million alveoli on average. 274 to 790 million per person, depending if you're an adult, if you're tall, if you, you know, what your belt is and some other um, factors as well. So there's a lot of them and we really need them because we need them to clear the carbon dioxide out of our blood and to bring new fresh oxygen in. Obviously we need oxygen, you know, to, to live our cells, our muscles, our brain, all needs oxygen. So if there's no interference and there's no inflammation, there's no disease, then that takes place through the small little barrier there. Oxygen comes in, it goes right through these little green cells, they're called type one pneumocytes. And the oxygen goes through, goes into the blood vessel, your carbon dioxide comes out, and the blue arrow indicates a lot of carbon dioxide, the red arrow indicates a lot of oxygen and you can take oxygen back to the heart and the heart can pump it to the rest of the body. Now we have COVID. So this virus, this type of coronavirus comes in, lots of them, okay? And what are they looking for? They're looking for a specific receptor, for a specific door. And that door is on the type two pneumocyte. But they've got to have a key to get into the door and they actually do. The key is these little spikes that we see around the virus. Um, it's um, proteins, S protein, spike protein, and it links up with that cell by uh, connecting the protein to the ACE2 receptor. That then gives the virus access to the cell. Okay, so that little bit of chromosome, the RNA, that's there, gets into the cell and it now hijacks your cell, as we spoke about in previous videos. Hijacks your cell, it takes all your resources of your cell and it says to the cell, make more virus please and make more proteins because I want to be more and the cell makes more virus. So that's obviously a big problem and if that just goes on and on, um, you know, you're definitely not going to survive. 
So your immune system, as we spoke about in um, the previous video on the immune system, creates all these white blood cells and it's got all these cells that can recognize the virus and specifically the CD8 cell, the cytotoxic, the killer cell. The killer cell now sees that there's a cell that's full of virus. And what it does, it connects to the cell and it secretes its own toxins to get rid of that cell full of, full of the virus. Because the cell can't stay there because the cell is now producing more of the enemy and you don't want more of the enemy. So it produces all these toxins and it eventually kills that cell with all the virus inside. As that happens, a whole lot of substances, cytokines, these, all these little dots, gets released. That triggers the macrophages, which is another uh, part of your immune system. We spoke about them as well. They're the vacuum cleaners of the body. They come along and they just eat up all the debris and all the virus and all anything that's there. It just eats it up and you know removes it. But it also releases substances. Three main ones, and you know one of them you might hear of and it's on social media and YouTube. It's called interleukin six. These substances are released to get the rest of the immune system to respond. So the substance goes across the border there and it goes onto the little capillary, onto the blood vessel. And what does it do? It causes inflammation. Okay, you've heard of inflammation before. If you sprain your ankle, you have inflammation. It swells up, it's warm, it's red, there's, you know, it's, 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 it's not comfortable. Now inflammation is what happens here. So this blood vessel opens up, it dilates, so you get a whole lot of extra white cells, the neutrophils that now leak through and go into the alveoli. You get fluid that comes out, that goes into the alveoli and a whole lot of other chemicals. And you might say, but why does all this fluid and stuff go into the alveoli? Because it, it wants to do this to get rid of the virus. The obvious problem is if you have all these blood vessels opening up all over your lung, you're gonna get a whole lot of fluid into the lung, into the alveoli, and you're not gonna be able to breathe. And that's exactly what happens. So if your immune system doesn't get, get this virus under control and kill it early on, when it's still in the upper airway, in the nose and the throat, and the upper part of, um, of the chest, when it actually gets to the lower part of the lungs, into the alveoli, then the problem starts a little bit. Because the more the immune system reacts, the more fluid and the more inflammation you get in the alveoli. And eventually it causes consolidation, which means collections of fluids in the lung and a pneumonia develops. And you get a bilateral pneumonia, which means the pneumonia is on both sides of the, um, and on both lungs and the patient's oxygen levels really drop. So if we look at the vital signs, what do we see? We see that the pulse rate will go up because you try and circulate the blood a little quicker. The breathing rate will increase because you're trying to get more oxygen in. The oxygen itself is going to drop because it's not gonna be able to move across the barrier and the carbon dioxide builds up. And you can even get your blood pressure dropping eventually a little bit. And those patients definitely need a hospital admission and they definitely need sometimes even to be in a high care uh, um, institution. When this situation deteriorates, you get a condition called ARDS or Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. What that means is that there's not enough oxygen going from the lungs to the body. The lungs overflow with all this fluid and all these chemicals and it just cannot do its function anymore. So now you need oxygen, you need to have a tube down your trachea, in, which is called intubation, and you need to be put on a ventilator machine. The outcome for that is not very good, and, and a lot of patients um, actually pass away and can't uh, get through that very difficult phase. And that's why it's crucial that we prevent and not get to that stage. The ARDS condition also affects the rest of your body, it affects your liver enzymes, they go up, it affects your kidneys, the toxins build up in, um, in your bloodstream. So it's really a very, very difficult situation to turn around from. So the crucial thing um, that we have to understand is that we've got to be preventative. We've got to prepare well to not get into the situation. That's why, you know, as I always say, you've got to rest well, 
if you do smoke or vape, you've got to at least try and reduce or stop. So why do older pa patients struggle? Um, older people have got often got chronic disease. They've got diabetes or they've got heart disease, high cholesterol. All of that causes problems around this blood vessel. You know, the, the walls aren't nice and thin anymore. There's definitely a difficulty in bringing oxygen from the alveoli to the blood vessels. So you, you can't have proper gas movement because over the years, it's already changed. If you smoke as well, then there's already inflammation and swelling and there's more phlegm. That's why you do get this chronic cough with, with um, those type of patients. Um, and you can actually reduce that by you know, re reducing your exposure. So please rest enough. Please um, try and change your habit. habits, eat healthily. Uh, we want the patients not to get to hospital. We want your immune system strong the way it should be, the way it should be able to kill the virus properly without hospital admissions. So a uh, difficult thing to discuss, um, you know, fatalities, but we have fatalities because the lungs just struggle to cope. And um, once you get to that situation, it, it does get difficult. To give a small recap on that thing, what do you look out for? If you have a high fever and you have a dry cough, your body is sore and you feel fatigued, stay home, stay in bed, look after yourself. If you get short of breath, you have difficulty in breathing, you'll find if your doctor checks you or a nurse or primary care um, contact person, yet your oxygen levels will start to, to come down. So they can have a look at that and check that with a little oxygen meter that they can put on your thumb and your finger. If the oxygen level, levels come down, especially if they go below 90, uh, 94 but definitely below 90 then you know that you're going to struggle if your oxygen levels still look good then you don't have to be in hospital you don't want to be exposed to all the bugs in hospital either so that is something that you can check with your local clinic um, your local pharmacies they can check that for you and see how you're doing remember knowledge is power it's important to know what's going on in your body it's important to prepare properly so that we don't have fear we will get through this and the majority of us will really be, be well and make sure that you also put a statistic that says I've recovered from this disease. Thank you for watching. Click the subscribe button so more people can listen to this. Stay home, stay healthy and stay safe.